welcome to Live Your Own Way with me, Lucy Gleason Interiors, chatting homes, life and inspiration with my very special guests. Hello, welcome to series two of my podcast. It's so good to be back. I've got another fantastic lineup of inspiring guests, and we're going to start this week with a super talented graphic artist and brand founder, Emma J. Shipley. Emma graduated from the Royal College of Art in 2011, already with a handful of awards, and literally hasn't stopped since. Her company has grown from first stocking her scarves with fashion brand Browns to working with Liberty, Anthropology, Clark and Clark, and Disney, amongst many others, with plenty more accolades along the way. I love her distinctive mythical and colourful homeware, textiles and accessories. They are absolutely unique. Hey Emma, uh, thanks so much for chatting with me today. Um, How are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. Um, Yeah, all things considered, can't really complain. I've got loads of questions for you today. I'm going to try and whittle them down a little bit because we'll be here all day. How was your new year? Um, Well, good, just um, stayed in London, had the, you know, the company of my boyfriend and my cats, so not too bad, really. Had some champagne. Yeah, that was about it. Is January a busy time for you and the brand? Yes. Um, I think because it's, like for a lot of business, just the start of the new year and kind of getting everything into, into place and um, getting all the plans ready for the coming year. Also, because we, um, we're direct retail online, so it's our sale period in January, which is really busy for us as well. So are you based in a studio or how, how does it work? Well, so we did have a studio. We're currently in between studios and we haven't got a new one yet because, of course, we're all um, working from home. So I just have a small team. We're all working individually, but doing lots and lots of Zoom calls. Um, and we will hopefully have a studio again in the spring or whenever the first opportunity is that we're allowed to go back to work really and work together again. Yeah. Are you based in London? Yes, I'm based in East London and, um, the others in the team are sort of dotted about London. So we will be looking for somewhere in that area anyway. So um, having researched you online uh, before our chat and, and uh, looking at everything you've achieved in like the last 10 years or, or so, um, I'm really interested to know what led to you becoming a graphic artist. You know, um, was it something you always knew you wanted to be? Um, I did always love art as a child and I always loved painting and drawing. Um, it was definitely something that I enjoyed from a young age, but also that people sort of would tell me that I had a talent and that kind of thing um and then as I went through education and stuff I just kept it in there so I studied art in school and textiles and then when I went to do an art foundation course after A levels um I tried all of the different areas which you do on those types of courses so things like graphic design fashion and textiles and photography fine art and I really felt an affinity with textiles because I loved the way that I could take something that I had created or drawn on a page and then for me it seemed like I could bring it to life um, onto fabric and into actual products which I loved Um, and also adding color through different techniques to sort of be able to take my artwork off the page and create different things with it was something that I found really exciting. You work with silk a lot, don't you? Was that something you started early on? Yes. um, I suppose when you think of printing onto textiles, silk printing has such a rich history um, and it's one of the most beautiful bases for transferring bright colours and also because the fabric is so fine It lends itself to my type of design where it's very, very detailed and intricate and it can really pick up on all of those details and the rich colours beautifully. Yeah. And you trained at the Royal College of Art, didn't you? So were you set on studying there? Was that your goal? Yes, I did. Uh, Royal College of Art is just postgraduate. So I did my undergraduate in Birmingham and I, you know, from finishing there, I the idea maybe that in the future I wanted to do my own thing 
but I certainly wanted to get some industry experience and I also didn't feel that my work was in the right place or that I was in the right place in terms of my creative development to be able to do that yet. Um, so I knew at that point when I finished my degree that I wanted to do the MA at the Royal College of Arts. I took a year out and was working as a designer for a studio. Um, well, I say I took a year out. I just got a job basically working as a designer in a studio. And then while I was doing that, I applied for the Royal College of Arts and started the year later. Um, so I just had that bit of industry experience and awareness. And I really went into the MA with knowing that I wanted to launch my own brand afterwards right yeah that's that's good and um like past students being like sort of David Hockney and Tracy Emin and Ozzy Clark I mean there's so many amazing people that have come out um of the Royal College of Art aren't there does that feel like extra pressure when you're there or not it's just a very very special place um and that's just woven into the history and the whole being of the place when you're there I think and it's extremely inspiring to me I certainly didn't feel like that gave it extra pressure more that that's the sort of benchmark and those are people who've come before you that you really want to um you know try and see what you can do and what's your special sort of unique um view on design that you can bring when you're there and the other thing extremely special is having all of the the peers who were around you and I think we had a very special year in that respect and that re- certainly like really drove me when I was there by seeing the amazing work that was being created all very very different which I think is what's so good about the the place is that they really encourage everyone to completely and singularly follow their own point of view and their own passion so there isn't really um, a competitive feeling it's much more of we're all in the same place we're all kind of feeding off this amazing amazing energy from each other but actually we're not in competition we're all doing things that are so different and that are so unique to us you can't be in competition when you're doing that you're not you know you're not trying to emulate other people you're just trying to um, get the most out of your inner being really and your soul yeah that's quite unique isn't it that's a lovely place to be when you're studying it was amazing I loved it so you've got a really distinctive style um you know I would say it's kind of it's sort of magical and, and sometimes mythical and often sort of animal themed as well how did that come about? Like, did you, is it something you developed over time or was it kind of intrinsic? It's something I would say that I did develop while I was at the Royal College of Arts, this style. Uh, it had been built, of course, through my years of um, education and then working as a designer, but I definitely, it came to fruition really at the Royal College of Arts. And it was just, a, I mean, it's, it's just something that speaks to my soul, the inspiration from the natural world, and then mixing that with um, myths and legends, stories from my childhood that I'd always had a real affinity with. And I think it's just about, for me, it was using those really personal references and personal loves and passions and bringing them together in my designs. Um, you know, so I didn't want to create things that had been done before in textiles. I wanted them to be completely unique and to be from this really um, personal inspiration. So I think that's what gives them a, um, you know, a unique quality and a distinctive quality is those things. Yeah, I think I'd say you know you could you could spot spot your work a, a mile off because it is it is so unique. I mean, I love it. I'm I'm a fan. What can I say? But um, so um, you'd already won some awards before you even finished the college. I think did you win the John Lewis Award for Emerging Talent? How did that feel? Amazing. I mean, yeah, I was really lucky to win a few awards: for graduation um, for drawing and also for color. And I did win uh, while I was there a scholarship from Osborne and Little as well, and then the John Lewis Prize. So it was just fantastic because I had, as much as I loved it, it was also sort of the most difficult two years um, 
incredibly, incredibly challenging, kind of not only in terms of it's, you know, it's not the amount of work, but it's more what it's, what you're expected to bring emotionally and, you know, the, um, the amount of yourself that you have to give to it. Every waking minute of the day, that's what you're living and what you're doing. Um, so of course, like it's lovely to feel that that's paid off and that you're getting some recognition and what you, what you've been creating, which I of course was hoping is, you know, unique and, um, people would respond to at the same time you're in this bubble where until the final show and bear in mind, this was also pre Instagram or anything like that. No one else is seeing the work. So until you actually get it out there and I did win some awards and things you know you don't know what the response is going to be and so having that kind of reaction of course it's fantastic and makes you feel like it's all been worthwhile but at the same time I didn't you know I was very much the beginning of my journey and I by by no means felt that that meant that I was going to have a successful career or anything like that it was just a nice recognition but I was well aware there was so far to go and so much to do after that. So how does it work with with your final year or your second year um, at the college then how do how do brands spot you? Um, Well I think because of the profile that it has it's always been somewhere that companies and brands will look to um, for new talent. I obviously wanted to do my own thing, so I wasn't really looking to get a job, but I was surprised by the number of companies I had approaching me from seeing my work in the graduate, who then I went on to collaborate with. So I did, when I graduated, I did um, designs for Osborne and Little. Um, I did, I went on to do um, a collection with Swarovski and um, Jaguar Land Rover. I did some work for so there was there were quite a, quite a few things that came about that I wasn't expecting um that actually really helped with starting the brand because it meant I had some other work going on that I could use to fund my own business one of your first collaborations with was with Browns as well wasn't it well that was um Browns on South Moulton Street they saw my graduate collection and then bought the scarf collection to stock in their store, which was amazing um, to have that as a sort of starting point. And that was definitely, I think, like a, a crucial moment for me in my career and then led me on to doing the exhibition at London Fashion Week and getting other really great stockers. You collaborated with Liberty, is that right? It's not really a collaboration. So again, they stocked my line, but that was. Yeah, that was a couple of years later, I think, or maybe a year later. That must have felt like amazing because they're at the top of their game, aren't they? Yes. I mean, to be honest, at that time, I think I'd spent, it felt like such a long time to me that I'd spent trying to get their attention. Um, so I was more relieved to finally, um, you know, get get actually into the store with my products. And yeah, that was something I'd really wanted. And been hoping for so it felt like a relief at the time yeah as a brand owner I mean how do you think or how do brands stay at the top of their game oh god I don't know I mean I'm think I'm still figuring things out to be honest but certainly I always come back to the uniqueness of what I'm doing and thinking about that at the forefront um making sure that I'm always creating and staying true to my values as a designer but also something that's so important when you have a brand is the customer. So for me, at least, uh, you know, and this is what seems to have worked so far. I like to have those two things kind of in balance. So I will always be making sure I follow and fulfill my own creative intention, but I want to also consider the customer and have the customer in terms of business forefront in my mind because ultimately they are what makes a business and you have collaborated also with um well lots of different brands but i saw anthropology and disney and star wars which is amazing (laughs) how did that come about how did that come about well with disney so disney owned star wars 
they and Disney approached me about doing a collaboration because they'd seen my collections and thought the the kind of style and the magical um and sort of intricate style could lend itself to creating something new with Disney characters so I did a scarf collection that was based on Tinkerbell um that was around the launch of one of their Tinkerbell films a few years ago and that was really fun because it was my I created illustrations original illustrations but using the characters and you know being inspired by the original Peter Pan and stuff like that but I could still put my own uh, stamp on it and my own style which was brilliant and then after that they had mentioned there were these new Star Wars films coming out so this was before the first of the new ones which was The Force Awakens and they were said would I be interested in doing something for that and I grew up loving the original Star Wars movies so I jumped to the chance to be involved in that and created um, a collection based on the original the classic Star Wars films. Wow that's amazing oh they're brilliant Does, is that kind of useful as a creative to see how other uh, different brands work and what they do? To be honest I try not to worry too much about what other brands are doing especially in the same um, industry because it's easy to be distracted and from the outside looking in you also don't necessarily know the full picture so if you see someone who might be considered a competitor doing something doesn't necessarily mean it's right for you so I suppose in that way I try and again stick to my own values stick to what my goals are for the business and you know thinking of who our customers are and try and more be led from those things rather than rather than looking at other businesses so your your designs are all really beautifully hand drawn um how long how long does the process take from the beginning right through to um producing them yeah well it does take me ages to be honest so they are all hand drawn in pencil i actually start off with a research phase which is quite long so i will gather together lots of inspiration it will often be inspired by travels and lots of other references in there um a lot that goes on before I even start to draw um, so that I have a lot to work with when I actually start on the artwork. For the drawing itself, it might be a couple of weeks. Um, and then I scan the pencil drawing into the computer to add colour and maybe change the scale. But I just keep the pencil drawing exactly as it is. And I then will have products produced, so have fabric printed. We work with some great mills in the UK and Italy and have different pieces made from the designs, and that can take, you know, months. So from start to finish, some collections take up to a year or longer, um, and the drawing itself is, is at least a couple of weeks. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. And do you, do you work in seasons? I used to work more in seasons um, because I was more selling to stores. Now that we're selling direct to people on our website, it's a bit more freeing, actually, because you don't have to stick to the buying schedules of the stores. So I do still produce new designs every year, um, but I don't necessarily produce them in exact seasons. I think. Also, from the beginning of my brand, I've wanted to be a slow fashion brand. I've never wanted to be a trend-led brand. So for me, it's not about this is the new season and then everything that I've done before is now old or not relevant or, you know, not not appealing anymore. I want these to be designs and to be pieces that will really last for years and to not be transient items so in interiors things tend to be a lot slower anyway and I certainly would like to that's the way I would like to work in these collections being very slow for the designs to endure over a long time and for them to you know be enjoyed by people for years to come yeah the way I see your designs they're kind of classic to me they're timeless that is what I've always wanted to do 
definitely and that's why I think for me it's important not to be too influenced by out to by different trends because that is just not going to create that type of design that really lasts and your color palettes are really stunning as well I love they're they're so rich and inviting does your decision um differ with um color palettes when it comes to interiors as opposed to the you know the scarves or is it the same all the same kind of palette that you look for it does although I work quite instinctively with color so I yeah I will have color inspirations that are often from nature from things I've seen photographs or even from you know things like David Attenborough documentaries have it's going to have amazing amazing color palettes in them but then I do especially with something like scarves I do think about the customer and who's going to wear it and how it's going to look because it is so important that it will suit people and you know that it will be colors that people really want to wear but in general I've always been drawn to really bold colors and rich colors so even when I'm doing things that are quite monochrome it might have a pop of peach or a pop of rich teal and even when I use a navy it'll be a very rich and deep navy so that intensity and the the you know color has such power and it's so emotive and evocative. I think it's such a powerful tool as a designer. And I really want to make the most of that with everything that I do. Yeah. Well, um, personally, your, all your colours, they just make my heart sing. Honestly, I just love them. Oh, thank you. That's what I want, definitely. Um, you've got this lovely um, framed silk art prints. And the, the constellation print is beautiful. Does that come from an interest in astrology? More astronomy, actually. So I've always just been um, fascinated by outer space and the wider universe. Um, and at the same time, you know, this sort of, kind of mysticism, I think for me, it's interesting looking back into previous centuries, into how people tried to explain things like the planets and the stars and um, came up with, you know, names for the different constellations and saw these animals created from the stars in the sky. Um, So there is, you know, there's an element of mysticism, but to me it's just interesting about how we have always been entranced by the universe and the sort of bigger picture and um, take my my sort of take on it, really. It is amazing, isn't it, when you stop and think about it? Oh, it's, I mean, you can't think about it too long because it's just mind-blowing. My daughter's at an age now where she you know, thinks about things like that a lot. And I just, yeah, it is. Like you say, you can't think about it too much because it's just so vast. Yeah, you try and, yeah, you tr- try and understand. I do love reading physics books and things like that and um, trying to trying to make sense of things. But some of it is just so mind-boggling that it's uh yeah you have to just take a moment to digest and then maybe think about something else for a bit <laughs> yeah absolutely it, um it can be quite a solitary sort of my mum's an artist but um you know working on your own all the time um how do you counteract that if you ever feel like you've spent so much time on your own drawing oh I love it I mean drawing for me is my happy place and when I get into that state of flow, which I think people do in not only artists, but other people do, whether it's like musicians or sports people, when they're really in the moment and it's such a pure kind of feeling and um, the time just flies, like you don't even notice the passing of time. So it's kind of a special thing. And that's when I'm sort of most alive, really. So I absolutely like and then, you know, after to relax after that, I just spend time with my cats, really. So, yeah. You've developed so many products now, sort of looking at your website. And um, Do you have a big team that, I mean, you've got to a point now where obviously you have your store and, and everything else going on, all the social media. Um, do you need lots of help with that now? Um, to be honest, the team is still pretty small, but we are growing. Um, so I now have a sort of, core team of six I would say but that's we've just hired two in the last couple of months so we've been doing a lot with a small team um and it's it's really nice because we obviously work really closely together 
and we can be really agile and for example with everything of course that's happened this year it means that we can as a small team kind of make decisions and make changes really quickly um but it is something that i that we are we are growing because yeah we could there's a lot more we could do with a bit of a team your website is like it's it's very own inspiration site there's so much to look at google the colors and, and products and also i've noticed that you do roller blinds now which has just made me very happy i have to say when i spotted those the other day oh good yeah they're all they're all made to order so you can kind of put in your exact measurements and things and we have a choice of a few different fabrics you can have on there and they could be just a feature in themselves couldn't they if you had a you know a, one color in a room and then you just had the roller blinds that would be amazing I mean pattern and color is such a good way to just transform a space and like you say something like a roller blind or even I, I definitely think the same about bedding it's such an easy way to do a whole room transformation just by having you know a beautiful printed statement bedding or yeah, one blind or curtain. So yeah, I do love that, the power of textiles to sort of transform a space. Oh, yeah, I love the um, the candles as well that come in the, the bone china pot with the, the scent complementing the, the art on the outside. That's a really clever idea. Yeah, they have been really, really popular and I love those. We kind of wanted to make them really, really beautiful and keepsake pieces. So certainly the vessel would be treasured for years to come. And each candle has its own little lid. It's got real gold details on there and they're all hand poured with um, the beautiful bespoke scents that we've we've worked on with a, a company called Bahoma, who are um, fragrance experts in London. Uh, well, they sound amazing. And tell me about your own home. So I've seen a few pictures on Instagram, but what colours do you have around the place? And are you drawn to a sort of a certain area with your style? Yeah, well, I rent um, a kind of converted warehouse space in Dalston, um, which is on two and a half floors. It's So it's an amazing space without, you know, just as a as the actual architectural space interior. It's got the original wooden beams and really, really high ceilings. Um, it's all painted white because that is the colour it was when I moved in but I have put up wallpaper and I basically use textiles and home furnishings to make the space my own as well as wall prints um so by by doing those things I feel like I've kind of done quite a big transformation and really made it somewhere that I love spending time in and feels very me yeah and have you got a particular colour scheme in your home I find personally, I love mixing different colours, but I, I probably have a couple of colours that run throughout just to bring it all together. And uh, yeah, one is definitely green and having like a teal green, I tend to have that throughout. My favourite, I love teal green. Yes. And then I also have um, pale pinks and peachy pinks. So those would be the two main ones, I would say. And then I, I use pops of brighter colours to make it a bit more interesting. And I do that through things like cushions, rugs, um, accent chairs and stuff in like brighter oranges, um, reds and and those types of colours to, to lift it. And talking of colours, um, I spotted throughout sort of your, your Instagram, um, you've had some different hair colours and <laughs> they're gorgeous I've never been brave enough to sort of have a slightly different color but it looks really stunning oh thank you well I've actually always loved dyeing my hair different colors since ever since I sort of managed to convince my mom to let me so I haven't given up yet and yeah my latest is sort of a, a pinky orange coral but really bright that I mix I mix a couple of different colors to get the color that I want um and yeah, I do. I do love, you know, it's, I suppose it's the love of colour just seeping into every area of my life, basically. Yeah, you might have inspired me. I might give it a go. <laughs> and you've got two gorgeous cats as well. Have they featured in your work at all? Not exactly as themselves, but no doubt they sort of do inspire element. The Lynx design was never directly inspired by them, but because I do see their 
little feline faces every day and her little paws and everything you know when I'm then drawing a cat I'm sure they do have an influence there but all the creatures I draw are a bit more wild and mythical than domestic creatures and that's the links with the wings isn't it yes oh it's beautiful thank you so I always like to ask um obviously it's a funny time for any students at the moment but is there any advice you could give to somebody who is starting out or maybe at, at studying at the moment or looking to go to art college? Well, I think it is a really tough time. And I, I do think for something like art and design, you really benefit from being around other people and from being physically in a creative space. So I think when you're studying, it will be incredibly hard to work from home. Having said that, I think some of the things I've said before about making sure that you really stick to your own vision and your own values. And as a, as a student, you may still be not sure what they are and still exploring that, which is completely fine. But I w- would just say don't be too inspired by other designers. If you're, if you're studying textiles, for example, don't be looking at what other textile designers are doing really especially contemporary ones because you're then not creating something new and you're not creating something that's truly you I would recommend thinking about what other things inspire you and bringing that to your work so whether it's films or photography or um, travel or you know other areas of inspiration that you can then bring into textiles or whatever it is you're doing will give you a much more unique point of view than if you're looking at people who are already in the market because I do see that you know sometimes students you see them much more trying to emulate something that's already out there and that's it's not wrong but it's just never going to then be original or unique yeah and it's very easy isn't it with social media these days to take sort of you know look at what other people are doing but you're absolutely right yeah yeah stay stay on your own path and just do what you're passionate about and I think the other thing to remember is that although now I think about the customer that's something that you do not have to worry about when you're a student and you shouldn't really consider you should think about your own creative vision and the chances are to be honest, if if it's a passion and it's an interest for you and you love it, then other people will because no one is an island, you know. It's like other people are going to have some of the same passions as you and if you really drill down into what makes you light up and the things that you love about design, that will resonate with other people. Yeah, well, that's really good advice. So, well, I know you've got some other things coming up uh, over the year um, that I'm really looking forward to seeing. But uh, in the meantime, thank you very much for this chat because it's been lovely to talk to you. And as I said, I am a fan. So uh, it's been it's been really insightful for me too. So thanks very much. Yeah, it's brilliant. Thank you very much, Lucy. Thanks for having me. I hope you enjoyed my chat with Emma. Her website is emmajshipley.com and her Instagram is at emmajshipley. If you'd like to keep up to date with me, my website is lucylovesyear.com and my Insta is Lucy Gleason Interiors. I've got another great guest next week, so do subscribe and until then, have a good one. Mm-hmm.